everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jim and this is Jimmy in the Wild. So we're on this tiny creek today. It's in some mountains near a city. Nobody realizes that there are fish in here. I used to fish this when I was a kid and it was amazing. It got maybe one GPS of flow. It goes into some larger pools and you have fish in some of these pools. So we're going to get out there, we're going to use flies, we're going to use some sneaking tactics and I'll show you some really awesome footage. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and press that big red subscribe button so you don't miss more awesome future content. This creek is pretty deep in the forest. There used to be a decent trail to get to the fishable portion, but there are so many fallen trees that the trail is all but hidden. Getting to where the fishing starts involves a lot of bushwhacking and watching your step. So here's the first pool. This is usually where fishing starts. I'm going to use an assortment of beadhead flies to catch the fish today. This one is brightly colored and has a decent weight to enable great casting. On my way downstream I fished at least a dozen perfect pools and I couldn't seem to get a decent bite from a fish. Quite often I could see the fish in the pools and sometimes they'd bite at the fly that I was using but nothing would commit to taking the fly fully. It could have been because I was going from upstream to downstream and the fish may have been startled by my presence. Most trout face the upstream side of the section of creek that they live in. So if I approach the pool from the upstream side there's a good chance that they'll notice my movements. The upstream side of the pool is the side of the pool that the water comes in from. I'm sure my luck will change when I come back up the creek and fish from downstream to upstream. So here's something I've been seeing a lot of. This is called a thimbleberry. It's a form of raspberry. Here are a few of the, uh, the thimbleberries with uh, blossoms. These guys are just loaded with blossoms too. Eventually I came to the rugged waterfall section of the creek. This section of the creek is made up of three or four medium sized waterfalls that take careful navigation to get around. I know there are some really nice pools of water in this section of the creek and I'm determined to find them. And since the canyon is very overgrown, I need to place every footstep carefully so I don't take a tumble. About midway down the waterfall section, we came upon this beautiful set of pools. The first pool was about three feet deep and it was at the base of a 15 foot cascade. It then tumbled down another six feet over a set of rock shelves to a smaller shaded pool. Somehow I forgot to start the video on my head mounted GoPro so I didn't get catching the first fish on video. But I did get an underwater shot of it. One little fish, little tiny guy. What's he gonna get? There's another one. All right, we're finding some. There, little tiny guys. Fish is probably four or five years old. Here's a bigger one. Oh yeah. That's a nice fish. That's a trophy fish for this tree. Maybe eight inches. I fished these pools for about 20 minutes, which is way more than enough time to catch anything that was in there. After I was done, I headed further down this rugged, overgrown section of creek. I found a few more small pools to fish, but I didn't get any bites. This bushwhacking is truly exhausting. After about 45 minutes, I decided to head back upstream where I knew there were fish. Also, navigating this underbrush was going to eat up all of my fishing time. And you know what? I came here to catch some fish. All right, there's a big brook trout down there. Nice. That was a good fish. Very pretty fish. Light dots. They're not quite as dark as a normal brook trout would be. Here's what we're using. Here's this purplish fly with the white feathers. It's got to be on the front. Gives it a little weight. We'll get it out. Yeah. 
Ooh, got one. Nice. Could be the big fish of the day. There we go. Got my hands all cold and wet. There he is. Look at that guy. Notice his gill plate is a little short for his gills. Birth effect? I'm not sure. Maybe it happened over time. I have no idea what happened. But I'm going to go ahead and get this guy back in the water. All right. Here's another nice fish. It's maybe six to seven inches long. This seems to be the normal size for a large fish in this creek. I think this may be the smallest fish I've ever caught on a fly. Look at that guy. Maybe three and a half, four inches. Goodness gracious. Off he goes. Here is the first pool that we fished today, and I'm pretty sure I saw some fish. I just didn't have anything take. So, we're up to eight fish if you count that little three and a half incher. Ooh, got one. Nice. Fish number nine. Maybe five and a half inches, six inches. All right, there he is. Pretty little male brook trout. Got to get him back in the water. And this is our last try to catch fish out of here. Ooh, got another. There's number 10. So this is the female trout, probably the mate of that male trout that we caught in here. Get her back in the water. So from here I'm going to put up all my fishing stuff and just hike back to the truck. I think I have about a half mile to go to the truck. It's not a lot. It's just a lot of uh, a lot of deadfall to get over, swampy areas, but anyway, it's been a good fishing trip. I've caught 10 fish, nothing to be proud of. I think the biggest fish I caught might have been eight inches. The smallest fish I caught was about three, three and a half inches. One thing to note, I left out the name and location of this creek to help prevent it from being flooded with too many visitors. This creek probably couldn't handle too much fishing pressure since the flows are so low and there are hardly any fish. Thank you for joining me on my adventure today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. You don't want to miss future outdoor adventures. Like the last few videos, I have a little spare drone footage. It would be a shame to waste it. So I've added it to the end of this video.